Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm coming to you from the new Ritter Temporary Command Post here in Abu Dhabi. <clears throat> I'm at the, uh, moved over to the Holiday Inn, mostly because uh, the place where I stayed before, they didn't give me any hotel points. So I was staying there and getting nothing for it. So I figured, well, I might as well move to a place where I get some points, right? So anyway, today to talk about, I was looking through, I'm in 1 Samuel now reading, uh, 1 Samuel 4, verse 20. So just set the stage here. So Eli was the high priest at the time. Uh, in the days of Samuel, uh, it was a prophet uh, of God. And Eli's sons were were uh, priests as well in the in the temple. They were the the uh, the house of the, or the clan of uh, Levi, and uh, and were were wicked. And and Eli, God was was patient until he just he just finally he used Samuel to tell Eli, you you haven't said you haven't done anything. You haven't you you love your sons more than you love me. You you refuse to to um, correct them, and so judgment was coming. And um, so there was a battle with the Philistines, and the Ark of the Covenant was captured. God comes running back, tells Eli, Eli falls back, dies, and it just kept kept uh, uh, tumbling there because because um, one of uh, uh, Eli's sons, Phineas, his wife was pregnant, and she gives birth. Um, and about this, see, verse twenty-eight, about the time of her death, so she died, was dying in childbirth. The, the woman who stood by her said, "Do not fear." Her. For you have born a son, but she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God had been captured because of her father-in-law and her husband, who had died, right? So she's, and she said, The glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. And Ichabod, looking in the notes here, basically means inglorious. And it's like, uh, so I was... You know, wonder strange things sometimes. I'm like going, I mean, if you're you're Ichabod growing up, I mean, it's in your name. You're you're constantly reminded of this pain and agony that your your parents uh, felt. And there's another story it reminded me of. Um, so uh, in Genesis um, chapter 35, uh, verse 18. So Jacob was married to Leah. And Rachel, Rachel was his favorite, and their sisters. Which I don't, I don't know how you could do that. <laughs> Those two sisters, but uh, Rachel, obviously, he he, he loved Rachel, um, and she had given birth to uh, Joseph, and then she got pregnant again, and and in labor, she she died in labor. So in uh, uh, Genesis 35, uh, verse 18, uh, and so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried in the way, on the way to uh, uh, Ephrath. And I, I read a book uh, years ago, uh, it's called The Bible is History, and it was basically a a narrative story of the Bible. So they, they took the verses and everything and basically kind of fleshed it out um, and, uh, you know, added dialogue and, 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 and gave a little more context. So it, it, I always remember this part of that book because Joseph in the, in the, in the story was a little bit upset with his dad with with Jacob going, well, why why did you change his name? Mom wanted him named Benoni, which basically means which means uh, son of my sorrow. And Jacob, who was in the in the story, was was just distraught and upset uh, that he had lost Rachel, and he basically said, uh, "Well, I." I, how could you, how could you let him go through the rest of his life knowing that he was the cause of his mother's death? And that would just be, you keep heaping that upon him. 
and and that's why he changed the name to honor her uh, son of which Benjamin means son of the right hand son of my right hand uh, which you know obviously the, the right hand you use it every for everything uh, it, in those days that was the, the the honor to sit at the right hand to, to you know he was the son of everything to me and which is why why we named uh, I always remember that part of that book and that's that's that was the point where I, I came home I was on a trip at the time reading that I came home and I told Arlene I said well we have another kid we hadn't had we hadn't had Benjamin yet and I said well if we ever have another kid if we have another boy he's gonna be named Benjamin and she's like well hold on now what and I'm like no this and I told her why you know son of, son of my right hand she really couldn't argue with that could she <laughs> she said well okay <laughs> so but so here's two instances where they named a child something, and and it, it, it's just kind of like, oh, how do you how do you go through, you know, why would you do that to your kid? And and I think about that, and I think about, well, you know, how many times do we do that? How many times do we saddle our kids with our baggage, and um. <laughs> You know, I, I, I've said it a lot here. I, I served in the Air Force for 23 plus years um, and retired and um, flew airplanes. And I, I, I have it on, I actually have it on video uh, when we, uh, when Nathan was just a little guy and he's walking around the house and he's, he's said that he's gonna clean up. So he's got this little sponge and uh, he's walked around wiping things off, and, and I've got the, the video camera following along behind him, and I'm like talking to him, going, hey, Nathan, what you doing? Oh, Nate, clean up, Nate, clean up. And that's what he's saying. He's walking around, and he wipes some stuff down. I go, hey, Nathan, what do you want to do when you grow up? And, and I, credit, I mean, this is, he's like, he's like two. And uh, he goes, Nate, Nate, fly a helicopter. He would, you know, he'd always refer to himself in third person, you know, Nate, 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 fly a helicopter. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't want to fly a helicopter. You want to fly airplanes, right? Like your daddy. No, Nate, fly a helicopter. And I, and I was arguing with my two year old going, no, 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 you don't want to do that. You want to fly airplane, don't you? And he started getting, started getting, getting mad. And he's, no, Nate, fly helicopter. And he was, you know, and, and I just, uh, we just laughed about that for years and just thought that was the you know, funniest thing. And, uh, and here he is, flying helicopters. So <laughs> he never, he never gave up the dream, did he? So, so, uh, you know, but how often do we, how often do we put that baggage on our kids, you know? Um, Will loves Star Wars. And I, I, I grew up, you know, Star Wars, obviously, but I'm, I'm more of a Star Trek guy. And I, I, there's nothing I can say that changes mind about all the reasons why Star Trek's better. He just he just doesn't get it. So that was uh, there's another case. I was uh, there's a movie uh, we watched uh, with Gary Oldman called Immortal Beloved about Beethoven. And in there, um, and I was look, looking this up, but uh, Carl van Beethoven was. Beethoven's nephew and there were three Beethoven brothers Ludwig was I think he was the oldest um, and his uh, one of his younger brothers um, had a son Carl and and then he died um, his brother died and it turns out Carl was the only male heir the only son to carry on the the the, the Beethoven name but so Ludwig like took Carl in and, and uh, basically put him in uh, school to learn how to be a musician I mean he's like okay he's going to be the next pr musical prodigy that uh, that carries on the Beethoven name but he was not he was not any good at all and his teacher told Beethoven that which just incensed him you know but but I mean he wouldn't hear of it and, and here we go, you know, just, just pushing these things that we think our kids should do on them. And 
I, uh, you know, we're responsible to God for ourself, uh, for our own self, and the, the good and the bad that we do. And um, I'm looking in um, and uh, these, you know, the verses that basically you're you're responsible for your own. Um, for we are, like in Second Corinthians five ten, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And we're all we're all responsible for our own self, and you know what? Uh, as as I've, I've learned, and I'm still learning, <laughs> as a as a parent to to give your kids the freedom to, to, to choose and to do the things that they want to do and and because they're responsible for it and we've set them up for success and 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 given them all the tools they need to go into life and succeed and it's up to them now and we pray for them certainly but but to push and to cajole and to try to fit them into you know where they need to go um, you know that what does that do to the kids? You know, does it frustrate them? And then, but the Bible clearly says, you know, fathers don't provoke your children to wrath. I mean, would that provoke them to wrath? Would that if we're trying to shoehorn them into something that that we think they should do? Um, yeah, that's one thing to. You know, I'm just kind of free thought ranging here, but uh, it's one thing to to give advice. And if they're, the children are wise, they'll listen and weigh the advice. But it's another to actively try to shoehorn kids into something. And I, I think, you know, to, to using whatever, uh, holding something over them or, or boxing them into a corner so that they got no other choice to make them do what you think they need to do. Um, I, just, I just don't think that that's right. I just don't think that we should do that as, as parents and pushing baggage and things like that on. Anyway, just some thoughts today. I uh, hope it was a blessing for you. Um, and I hope you have a great Sunday and we'll see you next time.